Dr. Parker, did you at any time during your treatment of Mr. McAllister discover a tendency for violence towards women? <clears throat> yes, I made note on several occasions. As I mentioned earlier, he began to lean away from wanting a relationship to wanting revenge. Revenge. Interesting. Tell me, Dr. Parker, you've stated you analyzed serial patterns in Atlanta through the course of researching your thesis. Did you ever meet or know any of the victims? Children. I met some of the children orphaned by the killings, yes. Did you have any dealings with the children to help them through? Only briefly. Only briefly. Then what happened? They went to an orphanage. At least one did. What was that little girl's name, doctor? Shelley. At that time, Shelley was sent to an orphanage in Charleston, South Carolina. The Chiltern Orphanage, a family-owned orphanage now managed by your wife. Isn't that correct, doctor? Uh, yes, but... So in a way, Shelley was part of the family. Part of your family. And you really feel my client could have done such a thing? Does sound like revenge. Yes, he's sick. Dr. Parker, as an expert witness, you're here to provide professional testimony, not thoughtless accusations. You will control yourself in my court. I want a glass. A glass of water. Okay, Doctor? How was it you came to be the caseworker assigned to Mr. McAllister's treatment? The uh, state prison board assigned me. <laughs> Don't you find that slightly ironic? No. My experience in serial patterns lent me a recommendation from the Atlanta PD. Isn't it true that Mr. Lee wrote the letter to the board citing your talents and experience with serial criminals? And it was he who recommended your acceptance into the prison system? Yes, but I don't see how it's relevant. My client has never been convicted of a murder, of a serial nature, or any kind. From your background, you seem terribly overqualified. Why, then, were you assigned to waste these talents on Mr. McAllister, when you'd have been serving the patient, prison, and yourself far better by taking on a criminal specifically related to your expertise in serial patterns. I didn't need to look any further. I knew what he was. Clever game. But in fact, wasn't this a plan by you and then Detective Harvey Lee to personally keep track of Mr. McAllister, perched in a position of authority with the power through your psychological evaluations to keep him in prison for as long as necessary to facilitate enough evidence for a retrial. No, there was no. Mr. McAllister has been described by you as a man in need of love and attention, who was, I quote, a meticulous planner who patiently moved in and invaded women's private lives you went to his home, the prison. You cornered him. You, allowing no escape, methodically manipulated his thoughts. Imagine a man entering your home who insidiously plied and maneuvered your actions, knowing you were trapped. And when you came to the realization, Dr. Parker, there was nothing you could do. Wake up. Don't be scared to wake up. 
prosecution brings you before us as an expert witness on the particular psychological makeup of Mr. McAllister. Yet it's an elaborate fabrication of the facts in an effort to engineer the court system and Mr. McAllister's rights under due process of the law. Perhaps you would care to enlighten us all on the partnership you have with Mr. Lee. It's all so perfect, isn't it? Mr. Lee and the police department plant the physical evidence as you plant Mr. McAllister's mental instability and penchant for violence to condemn my man as master serial killer. Can I ask you, doctor, who you're covering up? I'm not covering up. I've done nothing wrong. You're a psychiatrist, a surveyor of minds, a man who 15 years ago caused an imminent stir in the criminal investigation and media worlds by suggesting the Atlanta murders of 1984 were an inside job. I was wrong. The press blew my ideas out of proportion, but... In the end, I was wrong. My theories were wrong. Perhaps. Perhaps not, David. This could have been the closest you ever came to the truth. Of course, there was insufficient evidence to convict the detective accused in the scandal. But you did sufficiently dirty the name of the Atlanta PD. Perhaps you were close, painfully close. You just pointed the finger at the wrong man. Harvey was angry at you, angry that he, as mentor, was betrayed by his pupil. He's a man to harbor grudges, and you didn't play the game. Perhaps I've misjudged you, David. Maybe this is a very sick, sorry tale where you, just like my friend, are simply pawns in Harvey's complex game. You're not the man you used to be. Dr. Parker. Dr. Parker. Dr. Parker. Dr. Parker. To know the criminal, one must commit the crime. <laughs>